Uh, attention deficit disorder, we'll touch on that just a little bit in the, on the, in the next chapter, I believe. But and that's where the right hand side, but, but don't forget about the left hand side. It's motor control, memory, attention span, problem solving, motivation, pleasure, all these things, and dopamine effects. So, a very, very important neurotransmitter. Not that the other ones are not important, this one just happens to be my favorite. Uh, noradrenaline um, and serotonin are two more. And let me check on something real quick. I'll come right back. Okay. Um, for some reason, I didn't, the book put these together. Um, so I will talk about them together and separate. So we have two neurotransmitters basically here, the noradrenaline and the serotonin, and you can see what's involved with the appetite, sleep, mood, temperature, hormone release. But also um, depression or mood disorders. So if you're not producing enough serotonin, then patient's sad. So low serotonin equals sad patient. So, ser so low serotonin equals frown face. Same thing with, uh, with norepinephrine. Uh, norepinephrine is uh, also responsible for the fight or flight response. But uh, it also plays a role in depression. Serotonin syndrome is a toxicity of serotonin, and usually this happens with an overdose of serotonin, or is it not an overdose of serotonin, overdose of antidepressants. Usually it's drug induced. And I tacked on another slide at the very end, which summarizes the serotonin syndrome. Glutamate. Uh, it's an amino acid um, that is responsible for uh, cellular metabolism. And some of the things that it can affect, so for example, too much glutamate has been associated with seizures. GABA, another one of my favorite neurotransmitters. We're talking about a, a GABA a lot next in chapter five. Uh, one of the one of the drugs that affects GABA is, or not drug, but drug classes that affects GABA is benzodiazepines. Uh, also, one of the effects of, of GABA is anxiety and it does uh, increase the amount of, hu of human growth hormone. GABA inhibits uh, a couple of things. One, uh, and, uh, this can be s summarized um, if you want to think about um, what a benzodiazepine does um, for training anxiety, sort of the op opposite of that. So motor control, uh, consciousness, arousal level, memory formation. Now we're getting it, it's just sort of the general idea of, of mental disorders, and then we'll throw in drugs to treat those mental disorders. So the neurotransmitters in the brain, for some reason, have gotten off. 
and stress can play a factor into that, genetics can play a factor into that, age can play a factor into that, uh, and also situation can play a factor in that. For example, midterms coming up for your classes, not just this one, so you may be a little depressed because of that, you may have a little anxiety because of that, uh, and we know, what that, we know what's causing that, that anxiety or depression. But when you have that same feeling, but you do not have a test or midterm or whatever coming up, then that's when we, we may have a problem, but and we have to treat. You will learn, well, theoretically you will learn in psychology, um, for the treatment of some of these is group therapy or, th or therapy in general um, and altering certain things in your life. But in pharmacology, we like to throw drugs at problems, especially me. So you have a problem, give drugs. So psychology, we'll leave that for, for the, for the uh, group therapy, but for here, we'll talk about just throwing drugs at problems. So, my theory behind that is you can pay a psychologist $150 an hour to, to say that your mother did not hug you enough when you were a child, or you can go to the pharmacy and pay 30 bucks for some Paxil and uh, make you happy for a month. So it, that's, my, uh, that, that, that's my personal uh, philosophy on that. Uh, schizophrenia, I, mean, I, I may have a video or, or a little short video to show you at the very end on uh, example of a patient with schizophrenia, but uh, distortion of reality, uh, disorganized thoughts, uh, patterns, uh, their sentences are often chopped up, they, uh, sometimes called a word salad because the words are sort of, sort of put in and sort of all chopped up, social withdrawal, hallucinations, poor judgment. Which neurotransmitter affects schizophrenia that we discussed? Not everybody at once. Which neurotransmitter did we discuss that affects uh, schizophrenia? Which neurotransmitter? Mm -mm. Dopamine. Dopamine. Very good. Hint, hint. No, I was saying hit, hint. To, to, to put that on the, yes, on the slide, yes. You'll probably see that again. I'm not going to test you on this slide, but just for general knowledge, uh, the onset usually occurs between 15 and, and, and 25 for men and 25 to 30 in women, but I, I'm not going to test you on, on that slide, but just to make you aware, I guess. Bipolar disorder, uh, which now they're starting to call it, or not starting to call it, uh, manic depressant is now the new term for this. Um, but bi is two, and then polar, like polar opposites, if you want to think of it that way. So we have this uh, ha very happy, this manic state, and then we have a very depressed state. So a patient, it's, it's like a roller coaster. A patient is, is either really high up or they're really low down, uh, and there's really no in between. Patients often will stop taking their medication because they enjoy the manic state. Because uh, they can be up for, for days or weeks. Uh, and the, when, when they're in the manic state, they're doing, th they're doing major things. Um, you know, repainting the whole house uh, without stopping, uh, repaving the driveway or whatever. I mean, it's, it's, it's very dramatic. A lot of energy, very happy, very enthusiastic. So they enjoy the manic state. So they quit taking the medication. And then, when the manic state stops, and then it falls into the deep depression, the, then the deep depression uh, patient, um, and again, there's different levels of this or, or severities. I'm, I'm sort of going to the extreme to, to give you my example. But um, then with deep depression, patient may not even be able to get out of bed for days, weeks, months. 
uh, and then it just goes over again, cycle, ups and downs, ups and downs. Um, but uh, we give medication to kind of help smooth that over, but when we do that, um, the patient's not going to be in that, that manic state, so they just quit taking the medication. Uh, you may also see this referred to as manic depressant, and I think that's what most textbooks now are moving over to. I don't know why they're moving over to manic depressant, but they, they are. I guess it's more politically correct. So moving from bipolar to manic depressant. And again, it, it, it's, it can take uh, up to months moving from one state to, to another um, of this roller coaster that the patients ride on. Uh, depression, uh, classified as a mood disorder, uh, usually a um, defect uh, within the brain. Um, if it is a chemical, and I've got a slide in just a moment which will, which will differentiate, because again, it could be depressed over midterm coming up, or maybe you lost a pet, or something along those lines, if you're depressed about that. Um, versus something that is biological where there is not enough neurotransmitter or that is being produced or released. Depression often is uh, untreated, but with that said, depression is oftentimes called the common cold of psychological disorders. I hate to use the word disorders. Uh, psychological problems. Now, because we have better medication to treat. Before with the medication and the side effects of the medication, it was almost better to just, if your depression was not that severe, just to try to deal with it versus taking the medication. Um, but now we have better medication that works quicker, uh, compliance is better, uh, fewer side effects, onset of action is quicker. So depression is being diagnosed and treated more now than it was years ago. Um, again, because we have better medication on the market. And more people are, are aware of this as well. Some signs and symptoms of depression. You don't have to know all these, but I probably will ask you, give me a couple signs or symptoms of depression. So, I mean, I, I listed, I don't know, 30, 40 here. So if you just could memorize a couple or pick your favorite two or three. So sad, empty mood, loss of appetite, sleeping disorders. And you don't have to have all of these uh, for depression. And there is no blood test to see if a patient's depressed. So you go to the doctor, they don't draw blood, and then you know, results come back, uh, or they do a culture sensitivity test, and they come back, well, you're depressed. It doesn't quite work that way. Uh, it's basically differential diagnosis. And what I mean by differential diagnosis is we rule out everything else. So um, you come in with some of these signs and symptoms, we rule out the other things. Um, then we're left with depression. So then we can treat that depending upon the severity of it uh, with, uh, with medication. But you don't have to have all of these um, to, to, uh, to, be to fall in that category of depression or depressed. So one of my favorite slides, um, simply because we keep talking about the uh, biological factors that can cause it, but there's other factors that can cause it as well. And there's also sort of uh, good stress that we have. But we talked about the neurotransmitter levels being low, um, disease states, um, drugs can also affect it, situational factors, stress, like midterm coming up, uh, adverse, life, uh, adverse life events, so maybe you lost a pet or a loved one perhaps. Um, so example I have here is with low norepinephrine, low serotonin, patients depressed, we give them serotonin or we give them medication which will make the body release more serotonin or prevent the reuptake of serotonin. We're manipulating that neurotransmitter somehow so the patient's happy. Is everybody with me? Okay. Dementia, uh, which neurotransmitter, uh, well, 